Good evening again. It is 6.58 p.m. here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are getting ready to kick off this live webcast in about two minutes at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Good evening. It is 7 p.m. in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we are kicking off our J. Robinson Camps live webcast. And we just want to make sure that our audio is working just fine here. So if you are um, on board and, and listening, if you can just shoot us a little note that you uh, you can hear us, that would be great. Um, look on the right box of your screen and you will see a area that says for questions. So just shoot us a little note and say, hi, hello, excited for camp, something along those lines, just so we know all is good to go. Okay, sounds like we have plenty of people on board. Awesome, thank you for that. Okay, so we are gonna get this going here. Um, again, thank you so much for taking the time tonight. Um, and we just wanna welcome you to the J. Robinson camps. This is absolutely live, um, J. Robinson intensive camp experience webcast. Um, tonight's goal is that we want, we really just want to give you a good idea of what to expect at a J-ROB camp. Um, we know we offer the best summer training camp and we know that we are going to impact every wrestler who attends their physical and mental toughness. Uh, my name is Sue and I'm part of the camp leadership team and have been with the camps for almost 20 years. So tonight, it's, there's an awesome group on board here. We've got over 300 of you listening in between wrestling parents, athletes, and coaches who are joining our live webcast. Um, we really hope that after tonight, when you hear firsthand from our camp leadership team, that so many of the questions you have about what to expect at a J-ROB camp will be answered. Um, just to give you a little background, we started to do this what to expect webcast several years ago and had found it to be just a hugely valuable resource in preparing for camp and a great way to give you direct access to our camp operations team for specific questions you have regarding J-ROB camps. And on that note, we really wanna encourage you to use the live chat, the online chat that's available. If you look on your screen, again, most of you um, clicked in and said you were, you were on board, but we have um, two of our veteran customer service personnel who are just, their main goal of the webcast is to answer your questions. So it doesn't matter when during the webcast, you don't have to wait. If you have a question, just shoot it and they will answer it. And if we get um, a question that comes up quite a bit, um, what will happen at the end of the webcast is that either Jake or Garrett or Jay will um, uh, review that question. So again, on the questions tab on your screen, that's where it's at. And this presentation itself usually runs about 35 minutes, depends how long uh, Jay talks. And um, I'm just getting a look now for that one. Um, but we try to keep it short so you can, you know, maximize your time and, and not be, you know, on here too long. So again, 
Thank you for choosing our camps. We're excited to welcome the J-Rob Intensive Camp Class of 2019. And we are just so excited that you're on board with us tonight. Um, just to give you a little overview of what to expect tonight, um, the webcast will be divided up into four parts. First off will be Jay Robinson, and he of course is the founder of Jay Robinson Camps that started an unbelievable 42 years ago. What Jay is going to do is he's just going to provide a little bit of a history of what the camp model is based on and talk about the camp training philosophy and the core culture of our camps, which is the J7. Next up will be Jake Kettler, and Jake is our Director of Camp Operations, and he will discuss camp logistics such as check-in, on-site camp information, preparing for camp, and other important camp details. Um, I would give you a heads up on this, that the topics that Jake covers are probably the areas we receive the most questions about leading up to camp. So definitely um, make sure you tune in when, when Jake gets on board. Um, we really couldn't be more excited to have Jake lead our camp operations. Um, not only is Jake a 28 day intensive graduate himself before coming our director, but he has been with the camp system for several years before that and he knows the camps inside and out. And last but not least will be Garrett Garnas. He is our current managing director and he used to be the director of wrestling operations, but has since been promoted. And Garrett is gonna cover all aspects regarding um, just the areas that he is, is so proud of, of our commitment to customer service and just really helpful advice for parents on how to best support your wrestler while they attend camp. So I would say parents who are listening, please tune in for that that topic because Garrett, um, he's lived it, he knows it, and he knows how to help you get through when your kids um, might be having some struggles at camp. Um, at the end of the presentation, we'll wrap up with a live Q&A with Jay, Garrett, and Jake covering the most popular questions asked during the webcast. Okay, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about our J-Rob graduates because it's pretty crazy. Um, we have had over 45,000 J-Rob grads, which is just amazing, and their accomplishments and wrestling and life are remarkable. I mean, during the 2019 state tournaments, J-Rob camp grads won 111 state titles in 42 states and 551 medals in 45 states. It's just our greatest thrill to receive letters from J-Rob alum who express how much camp changed their lives. And our alumni have really pursued some really amazing careers in the military, Fortune 500 companies, and are some of the top wrestling coaches in the nation, just to name a few. And probably what is our favorite thing is the legacy aspect that fathers who graduated from camp are now sending their sons, which just affirms the difference it made in their lives and pa passing on this pursuit of ex excellence. And talking a little bit about Jay Robinson, the founder, um, I, there, there are just no other camps like Jay Robinson camps. Our, our format is based on founder Jay Robinson's life experience as an Army Airborne Ranger, a 1972 Olympian, multifaceted businessman, and over 40 years of coaching wrestling at the highest levels. Jay's dedication for guiding athletes stems from his passionate principle that wrestling teaches life lessons both the mat, on the mat and off. And Jay truly believes wrestlers like no other athletes have that special grit to excel and be in the top 10% of everything they do. So that is uh, what I'm gonna cover here and I'm going to pass the mic on over to Jay and please bear with us as our microphone transition gets a little rough, but uh, I'd like to welcome the founder of Jay Robinson Camps, Jay Robinson. Thank you, Sue. <clears throat> I want to welcome everybody uh, of coming and sitting and listening here and hope we can answer some of your questions. I would uh, encourage you at the at the end, um, ask any question that you'd like. Um, there's not such thing as a bad question. And if it can help you <clears throat> get some more thought on what's going on at camp, it'd be good. Um, talking a little bit about the training philosophy of camp. One of the most important things is we have an extended length of time and I found out over the course of the years, time is critical in order to get people to understand 
and do the things that they need to do. If you're, if you're building new skills, the more that you do it, the more that you practice it, the better you'll get at it, uh, whether it's work ethics or good habits, okay? And at camp, we teach campers how to overcome the physical and mental, mental fatigue. Um, one of the biggest things that we, we do is instead of just talking about stuff, what we do is we put kids through different circumstances and require them to function when they don't feel very good. We show campers that they can do things they didn't think they could do. And the way that we do that is the same way that uh, it's kind of a basis that they do in ranger school is you, you teach people that you can get through a lot of stuff just one day at a time. And so there's a thing called stress inoculation and that's being able to function um, when you get tired, function when you don't feel good. And it's not only for wrestling, it has to do with school, it has to do with work, it has to do with a lot of things, is that you get up and you go to work, and then when you go to work, you do your best job. And so you learn to function, all right? You learn to function when you're tired. And at camp, we're going to get you tired, and the reason to get you tired is to teach you that you can function when you're tired. So when you come uh, from day one to whether it's day 10 or 14 or 28, you won't be the same kid that leaves when camp is over because you're gonna learn how to function. You're gonna learn how to take it a day at a time, whether it be wrestling or your life. So we try to teach these things and over the course of time, uh, we've identified some principles that we think are very important. They're called the J7. Um, they have to do a lot with different skills that you'll learn as you go through your life. And in the end, we think it'll be a life-changing experience is that you can't go, if you come to camp, I tell the kids at, at camp, if you come and you listen to exactly what I tell you to do and listen the way through, I'll help you get through camp. And when you leave at the end of it, whether it be 10, 14 or 28 days, you won't be the same person. And one of the things that we do to do that is that we go to what we call the J7. And what the J7 are, are seven words that uh, when put in context about what I've found out that life is about. And over the course, um, it starts out with discipline, dedication, sacrifice, hard work, responsibility, accountability, and service. And the way that we learn these in the first probably five or six years, and you hear most coaches talk about discipline, dedication, sacrifice, and hard work. Everybody hears about those things. But the more that we talk to them at camp, by doing this over and over and every summer, you, you start putting things together and responsibility and accountability came up is that you're responsible for doing this and in the end you will be held accountable. So we added those two words. And then at about the 10 year mark, we realized going through this whole process that these six things are about you, but there's another part of life and it's, and it's bigger and it's whether it's about your team, your family, Okay, people that you work with is that service, is that there's an obligation to help others. So we define the things that we try to teach as what's called the J7. And we have done that now for over 30 some years, and it makes a difference, is that when we come to camp, you learn those skills, we help you redefine them so that you know what you're going to do when you leave and the impact that they'll have on your life. The intensive camp daily schedule is, uh, it's the same thing that's been refined. It's been refined and things added over the course of these years is that you're gonna work out four times a day. You're gonna get up in the morning at 6.30 is wake up and either at 6.45 or seven, you're gonna have running or weight training. And that's part of the, your endurance training. Then you're gonna get a little time off to sleep, go back to bed, get some breakfast. And then we have a hard, uh, technique practice, and that's just a technical aspect of the sport. Double legs, single legs, how to get away, switches, riding, all those things. And then in the afternoon, we come back, we have a hard wrestling practice. That's where you learn how to push yourself, and the coaches are going to push you to a different level. And we're going to work on endurance. And then at dinner, you're going to come back, we're going to have a mental att attitude training where I talk to you. What we talk about is different things, different skills. Um, you work on your workbook, and um, there's a workbook at camp that you go through, and you're going to define your own philosophy. You're going to write out your goals that you want to accomplish uh, in the next 10, 15 years, 
We're going to go about that process. Then we're going to, um, after the motivational training, we're going to do some technique. We're going to do some running. We're going to do some weight training. Just depend on how it falls into your category uh, on what your group is doing for that day. The fundamentals when we come to camp, the fundamentals at camp is to teach you some technique and practice training, things that will stay with you for a long time. All right. We use drilling and live wrestling to do that. We use it to reinforce what you're doing. So you'll get shown everything on four, actually in four times, is that you'll, you'll get the technique of it. You'll get a chance to practice it. You'll review it again at hard practice. And then in the evening, you'll get another review for it. And the object is the technique is in order to lose, use it or learn it, you go over it, over it, and over it until you kind of um, drive it in deep. So you remember, there's so much technique shown that you won't be able to learn it all. But what you'll do is you'll start focusing on the things that work for you and start putting your philosophy together of how it's going to work in your wrestling. We have athletic trainers that are there the entire time while we're at camp. They're on call, they're at practice, uh, they're in call at night. Um, and so they're highly, they're trained, they're certified. So uh, if you should get an injury at camp, what we're going to do is take care of you there and then get you back into the program. Another thing we do is we monitor your weight and, and skin checks in that, um, you're going to be working out so that you, you're going to lose some weight, just like all wrestlers do. But weight reduction becomes very important, and we don't want you dehydrated. So we're going to weigh you in. We're going to monitor that the entire time while you're at camp. Same thing with skin checks. If you have any kind of rash, you'll be pulled out of practice right? until it gets better. If you have a dehydration, you'll sit out the practice, and then you'll come back. So the whole thing is designed to keep you in the best possible condition as you go forward. Um, another thing is in you'll be issued what's called a workbook. And what you're going to do is develop your own personal philosophy while you're at camp. There's a lot of things that I've heard about in life that people have goal setting. But it's amazing that when I ask people if you have goals, some people will say yes, some people say no. But then I ask them, are they written down? You know what they are. And most people... 90% of people don't write their goals down. You're going to write your goals down. You're going to develop a philosophy of what you do with your life when you come. You're going to do those on a daily basis as you work through this process while you're at camp. Right? Right? And then at the same time, every night and during the day, we're going to talk to a lot of different things that you'll deal with in your life. Leadership, over how to overcome adversity what hard work is. You know, the first day of camp, I tell people everybody has a definition of hard work. Your definition is completely different than my definition. And when you leave here at the end of camp, we'll both be on the same page. All right? Because what we do is we redefine words so that we're all uh, on the same concept. So we're all thinking about the same thing, right? So those things will ha happen as you go through camp. Another thing we have is uh, the legendary, or what they call is the I Did It shirt. And the I Did It shirt was started the very, very first year. And it's, and it's kind of after the point of ranger school. If you graduate from ranger school, you earn a, what's called a ranger tab. It's just a little tab you wear on your left shoulder, but tells you that you're an army ranger. So we started uh, this uh, I Did It shirt. And it basically simply says, so you go to camp, I did it and you have to earn this shirt. And it's a hard thing to earn. You don't get it just because you show up. Everybody that comes to camp gets a gets a uh, camp shirt at the end of camp, but you have to earn an I did it shirt. And the standard never changes. It doesn't, make, doesn't change. It's not graded on a curve. Is that you start with X amount of points in the 28 day camp, you start with a thousand points. You have to have 700 points to graduate. And so it's a system that is entirely up to you. You get you lose points if you're late, if you don't wash your clothes, um, if you get negatives during any of the practice. So most of it, most of everything, what you decide in this point system in order to earn this shirt, is in your hands when you come to camp. You will decide 
whether you earn it at the end or not. And like I said, it's it's earned, it's never given, right? Some of the highlights of camp when you come, some of the things that you'll see, there's a thing called a red flag day. Red flag day is just a very hard practice. And it's over a period of time. Um, at the 28 day camp, there's four of them. And the object of these very hard, intense practices, practice is cut way down from say, an hour and 45 minutes down to an hour. And everything is done to learn to push you harder during that red flag day. It's kind of in essence, what's called a, a gut check, right? Is that you're learning how to push yourself. Because as we said about your philosophy, everything is about you learning how to push yourself. You're learning how to get into a stress environment and to be able to function when you get there. Black hat winners, all right, we have what we call honor graduates. They're black hat winners. Every wrestling group will have a black hat winner. There's only one. If there's four wrestling groups at the 28 day camp or at a 10 day or 14 day camp, one wrestler out of each group will be awarded the black hat. Um, at the at the final um, day of camp, we have what's called a final run. It's either nine, 12 or 15 miles. It's nine and 12 in the 10 and uh, 14 day camps. It's an optional 15 miles in the 28 day camp. You'll run those and uh, we'll talk a little bit about running in a, in a bit, but those are things that you'll do while you're at camp, okay? Uh, I talked to the parents uh, at the beginning of camp and actually at the end of camp, just telling them at the beginning a little bit what to expect, what they need to do. They're going to get some phone calls and how to talk to their son or daughter while they're at camp, what they can do to motivate them. And then at the end of camp, I talked to them a little bit about this is what really happened while they were here. Oh, I already mentioned a little bit about the personal development. They're going to develop their own philosophy they'll develop their own philosophy as they go through camp they're going to do a goal setting plan for them for the rest of their lives which will change from time to time and they'll get different talks about life skills um, and one of the things that we do to church teach service is we have the uh, smile network which is a which is an organization that uh, fix uh, kids uh, f smiles their faces and so we use that as one of our service projects. Um, there are four intensive camps. Um, it started out um, 42 years at just one 28 day intensive camp. And since it's grown to, uh, we added a two week camp in Pennsylvania and a two week camp in Oregon. And then we added a 10 day camp in uh, Iowa. They all do the same thing. They're just a different uh, amount of time and the amount of time um, that you're in camp. The longer you're in, the more things you can, can learn and the deeper it goes in what you can do. So it's all designed, the whole intensive camp is to learn by doing, to get you in that direction. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna pass this on to Jake Kettler. He's our director of wrestling operations. Jake was a two-time NCAA qualifier at George Mason. He's been a five-time senior Greco All-American seven years as a camp counselor. I think one of the greatest things about um, Jake that we talk about is he's been at every level at camp. He was a camper here. He was part of the staff here. Then he led one of the groups here and now he's the director. So this guy knows a lot of what goes on at camp at about every different level. Jake Keller. All right. Thank you, Jay. Um, yeah, excited to be here tonight talking and excited to get camp going and uh, just about a week here. So um, I'm, first thing I'm going to be talking about today is our check-in process and the first day of camp. Uh, so the first thing you're going to run into is your airport pickup and the airport schedule at camp. Um, and the way that works is as you register, you're going to fill out all of your flight information um, and flight time, arrival, all, all of that. And we will have a list of all that and people who are registered uh, to or who have signed up for the shuttle at the airport. And so we will be um, going there, picking everybody up at baggage claim. 
Um, and make sure you're checking, again, a lot of this is gonna be in your confirmation materials, but make sure you're checking that uh, for some specifics as well. Uh, you know, we try and recommend that you uh, have all your information for the airport submitted two weeks prior to camp. Uh, if there's some sort of last minute change or if something comes up, get a hold of staff duty uh, so that the staff duty number, which is in your confirmation materials, uh, get a hold of that number and we'll be able to take care of those changes on the fly there. Uh, once you get to camp, you're gonna check in, you're gonna get all of your camp information, you're gonna get a daily schedule on the wall, um, just all the information you need for camp, any last minute payments that need to be taken care of. You're gonna get your water bottle, your workbook, uh, you're going to get your, your weight taken, all that you're going to go through line, and it's really going to be a quick introduction into how things run at camp. Uh, Jay will be there talking, counselors will be there running through what you need to do, um, and then practice starts the first day. Uh, we're going to have, so make sure you have your running shoes and wrestling shoes ready the first day, and uh, the campers are going to do a timed run the first evening, and Based off of those times, we're gonna divide them into their running groups. So they're gonna be running with people of similar speeds as them. Uh, and following that, we're gonna divide them into their wrestling groups. And those are gonna be based off of weight. Uh, you're also gonna be able to pick up all of your pre-ordered merchandise. So if you got shirts, shorts, gear bags, anything like that, uh, you're gonna be able to pick that up in the camp store as well that first evening. So then we're gonna move on to uh, so some information about on-site um, for camp. The first thing is mail and packages. Uh, with that, don't mail anything to the J-Rob main office because like we've said, we're in Minneapolis and um, you know it doesn't work to get that to camp. So if you mail it to the main office, it won't show up at, at camp. Um, and mail delivery is gonna be dictated by the host school. So we don't always have control over mail services. So sometimes we run into things where you know something gets sent on a Friday and it doesn't show up until Monday, even though it might have been received because the school doesn't operate on Saturday or Sunday. So get a hold of staff duty or the school to figure out things like that. Um, and also make sure you're checking your confirmation material for the mailing address, because a lot of times it's gonna be different than the actual school address. Um, and they want it addressed a certain way. And all of that is gonna be listed, like I said, in your confirmation materials. And then also it'll be posted at camp so the camper can send that information to you as well. Um, you're gonna be able to have contact with uh, staff duty, with the camp store and with the athletic trainers while at camp. And those numbers are all listed in your confirmation material. Staff duty and the athletic trainers are gonna be available 24 hours a day. Um, they'll have that phone on them. And if for some reason you're unable to get through to them or the camp store, uh, during normal hours of operation. So from 8.30 to 5 central, you can call the main office, but we really want you getting a hold of uh, staff duty and camp store and athletic trainers directly during camp. And again, all those phone numbers are in your confirmation materials. We're gonna, we provide a laundry service at the intensive camps and that is for your workout gear only. Uh, it is gonna be washed daily. Um, and with that, we recommend, you know, 10 to 12 sets of workout gear for, the duration of camp, because you're gonna be working out four times a day and you have to wear a fresh set of clothes for each workout. So uh, just making sure that you have enough if something happens, either you forget to bring the laundry in or maybe it gets lost, something like that. Um, so that's kind of where we recommend that from. Um, and also there are uh, other laundry machines available on campus in the dorms a lot of times. A lot of times they're gonna be coin operated for that though. Um, food, you get three, Buffet style, all you can eat meals a day in the, the school cafeterias. Um, and then, so, you know, the, and, and those times are gonna be posted on the daily schedule each day. Uh, visitor protocol, uh, a lot of, we, we get a lot of people that um, seem to think that they can't come watch camp. You're invited to be at any session, come watch, um, sit in on practice and see what's going on. You know, we, we're as transparent as possible with camp and we want you to come see what, you know, your camper is going through, what they're learning, what the experience is like for them. Um, and one big thing uh, at camp is all traffic and pedestrian laws are enforced. Um, you can ask anyone that's been to camp before what happens if you jaywalk. 
um, but those you know are are taken very seriously because as I'm going to talk about a little in a little bit, um, you know, safety is their number one priority. Um, also, uh, campers are not allowed to have vehicles. Um, they're not allowed to enter a vehicle unless it is with a J-Rob staff member. And if they do drive their own vehicle to camp, they'll turn their uh, keys in on the very first day at check-in. And um, that will be kept in their camp bank, which I'm gonna talk about in a second and given back at the end of camp. So moving on, uh, we're gonna talk about our camp store. Uh, this is one of, the, one of the cooler features of camp. Um, you know, I, I mentioned uh, the camp bank and what that is, is you're able to bring, if you have some sort of valuables, um, say you have a passport or something that, you know, you don't want left in a dorm room, you can bring that to the camp store or cash. Um, you can bring that to the camp store and we'll put that in a lockbox and keep that secure. And anytime the camp store is open, they're able to come and uh, withdraw things from the camp bank or put something new in it. We also have camp store bucks available and what those are is it's going to be a, a digital kind of service where you, you basically have a credit in the camp store that um, they can use and you can add money to that while you're not at camp. So you can, leading up to it, you can add it by calling the office um, and, and you can also add it online on the registration system. And once camp has begun, you can add money to that by calling the camp store and they'll be able to, to increase that amount as well. Or if for some reason you're unable to reach the camp store, um, you can call the camp office. Uh, but again, we really want you operating through the camp store for that. So try that number first. Um, and then we have all kinds of things available for purchase there. Uh, there's gonna be snacks, beverages, pizza subs, um, things like that available. And then we also have all kinds of J-Rob gear. We have shirts, shorts, sweatshirts, really cool stuff. Um, and we put a lot of time into kind of figuring out what, you know, really should be offered in there, what got, what people are going to use at camp and after camp. So we've got some really cool stuff in there as well. And that store is going to be open three times a day, every day during camp. Um, it'll be open in the afternoon, early evening, and then at the end of the night is when a lot of the food and things are going to be in there as well. So uh, moving forward, we're going to talk about what to bring to camp and also what not to bring to camp. Um, you know, a lot of things that people are unsure of um, are things like cell phones, MP3 players, iPods. You are able to bring all those. Um, as mentioned, uh, at one point, you're not able to have cell phones in the practice facility or in the cafeteria. Um, and I think uh, Garrett might touch on that in a little bit as well. But that's one thing, you know, I, I, I've gotten a lot of questions. Are they able to bring cell phones? Yes, they're able to have cell phones. Um, you just gotta make sure you don't have them in those areas. Uh, you can bring laptops, fans, phone, you can bring a TV, coffee maker, small microwave, you know, kind of normal dorm things. Um, in Wisconsin, you can bring a bike. Um, you can bring a scooter, rollerblades, things that make it easier to get to practice. If you do bring something like a bike, I recommend getting a U-lock for that. So that you know we are on college campuses and so you can make sure that's locked up. Um, things you can't bring, uh, and, and this is just kind of a, a little look at it. There's a more extensive list online, but you cannot bring an air conditioner, a toaster, a toaster oven, you know, a lot of those things that aren't allowed in college dorms in the first place. And you definitely cannot bring alcohol or any tobacco products. Even if you're 18 years old, you cannot have tobacco products. And that includes cigarettes, chewing tobacco, e-cigarettes, any kind of vape supply, you cannot have any of that. Um, if any of that is found, uh, it'll be grounds for immediate removal from camp. Um, and like I said, if you go online to our website at www.jrobinsoncamps.com and you go under the parents tab, there's a camp packing list on there and it's a little bit more extensive. And if you have any questions on anything, just be sure to either send us an email or give us a call and we'll be be able to answer pretty much everything. So uh, moving forward, we're gonna talk about pre-camp preparation. So like I said, we're about tomorrow, we'll be one week away from the start of Iowa. And so we're, we're getting there. So, you know, it's time to really, really make sure you're buckling down, getting ready for camp. Um, conditioning is one thing to, you know, work on coming into camp. Uh, you do not want to come to camp to plan on getting in shape. Uh, you are definitely going to leave in much better shape than you show up, but you want to be 
in shape coming into camp. You should be running, you know, every day, every other day, mixing in distance, sprints, hills, strength training. You should be doing that as much as you can and also be on the mat, you know, as much as you can. I understand it's it's summertime, school's out, and a lot of times it's harder to get on the mat, but you know, I recommend wrestling at least three days a week if you can if you can find someone to do that. If not, do some shadow wrestling, something like that. There's always something you can be doing. Um, another preparation part, and this is something we get a lot of questions on, is uh, a Valtrex prescription. So we strongly recommend a prophylactic prescription of Valtrex. And what this is, is it helps prevent the herpes virus. And uh, what our recommendation is, is one gram daily, five days prior to camp and throughout the duration of camp. And where this comes from is we had a study done at camp over a decade, over a decade of um, information has been recorded. And we found that by using this dosage, you get an 89.5% reduction of, of herpes outbreaks. So um, that's one thing. And if you have any questions about that, or if your doctor has any questions about that, uh, send us an email or give us a call and we'll be able to get uh, a link and uh, contact information to get that study. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier, you know, 12 sets of run of gear. You want to have, it, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Um, and, you know, like I said, if something happens with the laundry or you forget to bring the laundry in, it's always good to have that extra gear. Um, another thing is good running shoes. I would recommend if you can do it to bring two pairs of running shoes. Um, and that goes for wrestling shoes as well. And you probably don't want to get brand new running shoes or wrestling shoes and wear them the first day of camp. You're going to want to break them in going into camp. And, you know, we recommend putting campers names on everything, you know, socks, underwear, shirts, shorts, everything you've got, you know, label it, put their name on it. Just so, you know, you have 200, 250 kids at camp, things can get mixed up and it's, you know, a lot easier if it has your name on it. Um, finally, you know, I, I, I know I've said this a lot, but review our recommendations and requirements in the confirmation materials. Um, you know, really, really read through those confirmation materials. You're going to find a ton of information in there. Um, and kind of my last camp specific topic I'm going to be talking about is safety. You know, safety is our number one priority at camp. You're trusting us with your with your campers for 10, 14, 28 days. And, you know, we're going to do everything we can to make sure they are in uh, a very safe environment while while we're pushing them to their limits. So uh, with that, we're going to have daily weigh-ins. Um, the reason for this is to make sure they're not, you know, when they're losing weight, it's not water weight. They're actually losing weight. And and with that, we have one and a half percent body weight loss of allowed um, throughout camp. If they lose more than that um, during the weigh-in, they'll be able to sit out or they'll have to sit out for two practices and then they'll re-weigh in. Um, and it's not a surprise when weigh-ins are. They're listed on the schedule every day. So, and we also have check scales available in the dorm. So they're able to monitor their weight and you know be very, very aware of what they're weighing. Um, as, as I talked about earlier, the, the prophylactic prescription of Valtrex to help prevent herpes. And we also do daily skin checks at camp done by our athletic training staff. Um, and you know, as Jay mentioned earlier, we do have a full, staff of professional athletic trainers um you know it's their job to make sure that that the campers are safe and things are treated correctly um and and like we said you do have a direct line to them uh check your confirmation materials for that number we also have a uh 10 to 1 or better ratio of staff to campers and you know 10 to 1 is our minimum we're most of the time we're going to have a better ratio than that so you know, it's a very large camp, but you're going to get one-on-one -on -one attention. You're going to get individualized instruction and help. Um, we also adjust our practices daily. Um, it's not just a set schedule. We do the same exact thing every day, every year. There's going to be peaks and valleys. We're going to make adjustments. We're going to crank it up some days. We're going to throttle back some days, and it's all based on how the campers are feeling. And, and you know, what we've seen with the 42 years of this camp has been going on. We know how how to adjust things and, and make it work to get the most out of your camper. Um, all of our counselors undergo background checks. Uh, so, um, you know, we make sure they're all, all, all safe. And then we also have all of our staff complete a mandatory two day training program prior to camp. And, you know, the big thing is the campers are immersed in a structured environment. 
they know where they're supposed to be all day at it, at every time of the day. And if they don't, they can ask somebody and they can check the schedule. And um, also we're, you know, taking role before every practice. We're, we're doing bed checks every night. We're making sure everybody's where they're supposed to be. So it's, we, we have, you know, layers of, uh, of confirmation in that area. So, you know, again, safety is our number one priority. Um, really, really looking forward to having everyone at camp this summer. Um, that's all for me. I'm going to pass it off to Garrett Garnis, who is our managing director. Um, Garrett was uh, the director of wrestling operations before I was. Uh, he wrestled for Ohio University. And um, like I said, he's our managing director now. So Garrett Garnis. Great. Thank you, Jake. Um, what I'm going to be covering is... A, a couple different things and I'll I'll try to um, hurry through them a little bit um, we definitely want to get to your questions and answers um, here at the end so make sure to keep uh, sending in those questions and we'll get through those uh, in a couple slides here but just real briefly quicking on the online account um, so when you register you're actually creating an online account and you can sign into that account using your confirmation number that would have been emailed to you um, automatically right after you registered. So if you want to get into your, your account and see what your answers were um, or make additional payments or add things um, like jump ropes or shirts or shorts or any other products um, into your account, you can do so by logging into that using your confirmation number. Uh, payments are due three weeks before the first day of camp. Um, so for the Iowa camp starting on June 6th, um, we're actually uh, already passed that deadline. So if you haven't made full payment yet, make sure you do that. Um, if payments aren't made after 24 hours after the first day of camp, um, we will hold campers out. And now it's it's the last thing we want to do, but um, we have obligations to to pay for campers as well. So um, we will do that. Again, it's, it's, it's not to threaten anyone. It's simply just to make sure uh, everyone's on the same page. So um, if you have questions or if you need um if you need extra time to make payments just call us like make us aware let us know that um you're aware of it um but it's also not too late to sign up too so uh please sign up if you haven't done so yet and you're listening to this camp and not sure what uh camp is right for you if the 10 day is is the camp for you it's still still time to sign up so um really due dates um again three weeks um to make payments also three weeks before camp to make make or change shirt or shorts orders. Um, so log into your account. The best time to do that is actually right when you register. But if you want to make uh, additional purchases, you can always call us or log into your account. Um, kind of skipping a couple of things. I've already talked about purchasing products and services, uh, downloading forms. Um, again, you'll receive a confirmation email that has a confirmation number, but it also has a link to your confirmation email. And each confirmation uh, packet, excuse me, each confirmation packet is a little bit different. It has camp specific information. Um, so if you want to know a phone number on who to call, whether it's the camp store, where to check in at, what dorm they're staying in, all that is in your confirmation email. It's not a standard packet from camp to camp. It is camp specific. So please read that. I can't stress that enough. Basically everything we're covering today and everything you could possibly want to know is in that confirmation packet. Yes, it's long. It's a little bit boring to read, but um, ultimately everything you need to know is in there. So if you need another one, call us, send us an email. We'll, we'll send you another confirmation packet. Um, Let's see here. So you, I already mentioned your registration information can be updated. So if you didn't need a shuttle at first, uh, but now you do and you're flying, just log back in, make that change or give us a call. We'll be able to help you out. Um, something new this year is our medical forms. Uh, we are now completing those via DocuSign. So in the past, you actually had to print out paper uh, and, and put your John Hancock on there and send it back to us. Um, but now uh, we're doing it all through DocuSign. So um, it's an electronic version. It gets emailed to you. Um, we email it to you within five business days of when you registered. Uh, so it might not have came right away. Uh, we send them in batches. So um, we will send you the email actually looks like it's coming from a DocuSign email address, but it's um, it's our branding and everything on it. So you'll be aware of it. So fill out your medical forms. They must be submitted before camp. Do it electronically uh, and attach your medical um 
insurance to that as well. Um, it's super important for us to have. So if you have any questions on that, um, give us a call, we'll walk you through it. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's super, super important. Obviously, we don't want anyone to get injured at camp, but it happens. It's a sport of wrestling. It's unfortunate, but um, wrestling is a tough sport. So we try to be as safe as we can, um, but it helps if you send that information ahead of time. Moving on to customer service, uh, we do have a full-time customer service manager. Uh, her name is Carson. She's actually uh, responding to your uh live chats right now so uh, she's very helpful been with us for a couple of years so give us a call you more more than likely you're going to receive her uh on the phone call when you give us a call um if you don't catch someone let's say we're out of office hours um our office hours are 8 30 to 5 p.m uh central time if you call outside of off outside of hours to our main camp office um please leave a message. We have a 24 hour response time. We'll get back to your inquiries. Um, and either one of us here at the office will give you a call back. Um, the camp office phone is monitored seven days a week. But again, I mentioned uh, the hours are nine to five central, or excuse me, 8.30 a.m. To, to 5 p.m. central time. Otherwise, during the camp season, it's usually best if you call um, the specific camp. So at five day camps, we have a specific five day camp phone. Again, that number is in your confirmation packet. Depending on the camp that you're at, that number will change. So please look at your confirmation packet. That will have that phone number if you're at it, attending a five-day competition or technique camp. If, you're attending, if you are attending an, an intensive camp, we have three other phones. You can call the on-site staff duty phone. Uh, you can call the on-site athletic training phone and you can call the camp store phone. So depending on what you wanna do, if you wanna talk about your son's injury, call the trainer phone. If you wanna add camp store bucks, call the camp store phone. If you just wanna get a hold of your son, see how he's doing, he's not answering his cell phone, whatever, uh, give our staff duty, staff duty phone uh, a call and we'll be able to help you out there too. So again, check your confirmation materials uh, for that phone number. Uh, one other thing to mention, um, if you can't get a hold of your campers, um at camp by calling their own personal cell phone it's probably because they're at, at practice or they're uh at a meal their campers are not allowed to have their cell phones during meals um or during practice so um if you're calling them five times in in a matter of an hour and they're not answering that's probably why uh, but our uh, staff duty phone is monitored 24 7 so give us a call we'll we'll get a hold of your camper if it's an emergency um a very common question is uh, a lot of parents want to see photos of their kids while they're at camp, and rightfully so. Um, follow us on social media. Um, on Instagram, it's at jrobcamps, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash jrobcamps, and then obviously Twitter as well. Uh, we put up uh, a lot of photos on uh, Instagram and Facebook, so definitely follow us on those pages. Um, that's your best bet to receive photos while you're at camp as well as, vi as, well as videos too. Uh, obviously, we cannot guarantee that every kid is going to get in a photo or a video. We try very, very hard, um, but we can't guarantee it. We also, we actually have a couple individual photo sessions that are optional. Um, if your camper's not in them, they have one opportunity to get in there. Um, it's optional. If they don't get in for the individual photo, we apologize, but it's on them. So that's one thing that we teach um, at camp is responsibility and accountability. So um, we do our best to get everyone in photos, but check that out um, moving on to parents um, Jake already touched on it briefly but all practices are open to any parents coaches family uh, anyone that wants to come to camp and watch practices are open um, it's a very uh, I don't know how that misconception ever got out there on, on why parents aren't allowed to practice but they are oftentimes we encourage it actually uh, on the second to last day at camp um, we have a big red flag practice that that Jay touched on um and it's it's a very big like graduation ceremony essentially um that's a very cool site we encourage every every parent and and family member sibling to come and watch that so as well as give your facetime your kids call your kids um touch base with them it oftentimes it, it helps kids get through practice because at the end of the day um we do have tough expectations at camp Camp is hard. It's supposed to be hard. Um, Jay talked about stress inoculation. Um, we teach you how to function when you're tired. Um, why do we do that? Because wrestling seasons are long. I've been through wrestling seasons since I was five years old. They're long. They're hard. 
um, there's ups and downs and you have to be able to pull through those and, and learn how to function when you're tired. And that's what this camp is, is really all about. Yeah, obviously we're gonna teach you technique and you're going to get better at technique. Don't get me wrong, you will. Um, but we, we teach you how to do that. Um, so what do you do if, if your camper wants to come home? Again, that's a, that's a very common question. How many kids quit at camp? Um, really, the, the answer to that question is it, it varies. Um, but there's some things that you can do uh, to help set the expectation for your camper to help get through camp. Um, we don't want any, any camper to, to quit. We don't want any wrestlers to quit the camp. Uh, we're here to help. Um, our staff is here to help. Um, and ultimately, if your, your son is having a hard time, come talk to us. If you don't tell us, we can't help you. Um, so anyway, as a parent, set, set the expectation. Uh, don't give them an out. Um, let them know that you want them to finish, push through it, take it day by day, uh, practice by practice, and, and you can get through it. You know, encourage them to stay for at least the first week. And then after they get through the first week, um, one more day, then one more day. And by the, by the end of the camp, um, they've made it all the way through. Um, and let, let us know that, um, let, please tell them that they can come talk to us as well. I mean, we tell them multiple times throughout camp, but it's, oftentimes it just takes to hear it from a different person to let them know that, hey, you know, our door is always open. Um, try to avoid asking them yes or no questions. Um, make sure, get them talking. One of the best things um, that can help people mentally is just to talk to someone else. Um, so don't ask them yes or no questions. They're going to clam up. They're going to do those sorts of things. Um, and then just give them guidance that they can do it. You know, some, again, sometimes just hearing it from a different person uh, will help a lot. Um, so really, that's that's what I got about parents. Um, my biggest my biggest thing to parents is be open, communicate, communicate to us, communicate to your kids, and tell your kids to communicate that to us as well. So um, that's really what I have for parents. Again, if you have any other questions, um, keep sending them in via chat feature here, as well as giving us a call um, on our main camp office. Um, that number is 612-349-6585. Uh, we're not taking phone calls now, but again, 8.30 to 5 Central Time. Um, so we'll get to some Q&As. Uh, launch, so hours of operation for laundry. So just kind of going into that a little bit more uh, on the laundry. So we will do your camper's laundry for them as long as it is practice gear. So meaning shorts, uh, t-shirts, underwear, socks. Um, we do not wash towels, so bring plenty of towels. Um, and basically what happens is it's on the daily schedule. Um, it gives them a, an exact time and an exact place to drop off their dirty laundry. Um, they're given a laundry loop. That's why you'll notice there's a laundry loop deposit of $10 on the intensive camp. Um, and you will get that back once you turn in your laundry loop at the end of camp. But anyway, you'll put all your clothes on that laundry loop. You'll deposit them into the dirty laundry bin. They take them, wash them, and then there's an exact time on when to pick them up. Um, again, it's all on the daily schedule. Everything that, that the campers need to know is on the daily schedule. Um, I'll answer one more question and then... Um, pass it on to someone else here to answer some more questions for you. Uh, one question, parents who don't go to check-in, how can they hear? Um, oh, how can they hear the parent speech? Uh, how to help when kids call home? Um, so we do have uh, a video that, um, so we have a, a creative director that uh, does a lot of video work and actually sends out a highlight film uh, at the end of each intensive camp. Well, excuse me, let me back up. He films during the intensive camp and then sends it out uh, following the entire summer. So, um, but you can hear a lot of the speech in, in that video. Um, I would check it out online as well. Um, but really, this, we don't like live stream anything about the parent speech. Um, yeah. I'll pass it on to um, Jake Kettler here for some more questions. So one question we were, we got was about the Valtrex dosage. Um, it is one gram um, daily, so uh, not it, it's one gram, so that would be a thousand milligrams daily. Um, and again, that's five days prior to camp and throughout the duration of camp. Um, 
also want to let you know the packing list is also in their conf confirmation packets as well. Um, and look into that as well for where to meet counselors at airports. Um, Cause again, it's going to be different for each camp. Um, so make sure you're checking that confirmation material to find all this information. All right, it's Garrett Garnis again. Um, one other question was where to meet counselors at the airport. Um, this is a very good question. So um, we are, we're not a taxi service. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't mean that in a bad way, but um, your campers, if you're traveling by, by airport and they've requested a shuttle, there's a very good chance that they're gonna have to wait. Um, could be up to an hour. Uh, we have shuttles running roughly every hour. So if they get there at the airport and they just missed the first shuttle, or um, let's say they, they arrived at 6 a.m. and we don't start shuttles until uh, 9 a.m. or 10 a.m., um, there's a very good chance they're gonna have to wait. Um, we just, we don't have the ability um, to take campers individually by camp. So um, I just wanna throw that out there. We take buses, um, we have to fill up full buses before we can shuttle kids back. Um, at Iowa, it's, a, it's about an hour and a half to two hour uh, shuttle ride from the airport. So we have multiple buses, buses doing that. Um, so that's why we have to have full buses. Um, at Erie, or in, excuse me, in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, um, the, the uh, bus is only about a 20 minute bus ride so that we can get to a little bit quicker. Um, as, and then the 28 day intensive camp, um, it's about a 45 minute ride uh, to camp, flying to Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, and then out in Oregon, it's about an hour and a half uh, flight to, or excuse me, an hour and a half shuttle from Portland Airport as well. So go to baggage claim. Again, it's in your confirmation materials, but go to baggage claim. We have uniform staff members there at camp. Um, if you were an unaccompanied minor, um, you must go through our um, travel agent. Um, it's called Travel One. Again, it's on our website and in your confirmation packet. Uh, the gal's name is Heidi Beyer. Um, she will help with any unaccompanied minors. Um, if, for instance, if you're 13 or 14 years coming, 14, 13 or 14 years old coming to camp, the chances of you having to be an unaccompanied minor on a flight are pretty high. Um, so please be sure um, to contact Heidi Beyer. She'll help you get better deals on flights and also help you get to, to camp on time. Um, and make sure that we know who is an unaccompanied minor, because if we don't know who an unaccompanied minor is, they're gonna be waiting at the gate um, and we have to come pick them up physically. So I hope that answers your questions about uh, shuttle service. Um, so it's not too late to send us your, your flight information um, if you haven't done so yet or sign up for shuttle service. All right, so we've um, gotten a few more questions about laundry. Uh, I, I know Garrett mentioned you'll get a laundry loop uh, with that. You know, they'll they'll get that at check-in on the first day and they'll be shown how to use it and instructed how to use it at check-in. Um, and then if, if there's any issues, you know, we'll go over it at practice as well. Um, but they'll get that, uh, it'll have a number on it. It'll be a specific color so they'll know which one is theirs and be able to find it. Um, and again, each camp it's going to be a little bit different as far as the location goes, but uh, you know they'll just follow the schedule to know when to drop off and when to pick up. Um, also got a number or a question about the number of campers in each group. Um, it's it's going to vary a little bit by camp and the numbers that sign up, but uh, generally we're going to have um, about 55 uh, campers per group. And again, it's not going to be that exact number each time. Um, and, and it may vary a little bit depending on the size of the group. Um, you know, like, like I said, it'll be 50 to 60 campers. And, um, you know, if, if they're the heavier group, it's going to be a little bit uh, smaller number than the, the smaller groups just because of mat space. Um, and, and like we said, they're separated by weight. Um, so, and, and same with the running groups, um, you know, there's going to be, 20, 25, uh, a kit, you know, up to 30 maybe, um, campers in a running group, and that's going to be 
uh, separated by by uh, the times on the first day um, and on that first run. And we can, if adjustments need to be made throughout camp, we'll make those adjustments as well. Um, as far as uh, roommates go at camp, so everybody's going to have roommates. Um, we do not do any prior roommate assignments or any room res registration um, prior to camp. Uh, there's going to be two campers per room, um, and and there's going to be two beds in each room, so you know they're not sharing beds or anything like that. Um, they're they're going to each have their own bed, their own their own space. And in order to, if you want to room with somebody in particular, what you'll have to do is go through check-in together. Um, so our room assignments are all done at check-in. And so if you want to room with somebody specific, you'll have to go through check-in with them. All right, um, so we will be answering questions uh, for about the next 10 minutes here online if you have any more. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has anything they want to add as far as wrap up goes, but uh, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Um, it's been about an hour here, so I know we've covered a ton of information. This will this video will be saved and archived, so you can go find it later and and uh, you know review some of the stuff and be able to go over what it is. And you know a couple things, just make sure you're you're. Uh, if you have any questions, you're getting a hold of us, you're giving us a call at the office, you're sending us an email. Um, make sure you're you're following us on our social media accounts. Again, for uh, it, it's on Facebook, we're J Rob Camps. On Instagram, we're at J Rob Camps, and on Twitter, we're at J Rob Camps. So uh, J R O B C A M P S for for all of our social media. We post a lot of stuff on there. Um, we have a YouTube channel. All of our videos are archived online. Uh, and I think you've heard it a few times tonight, but make sure you're reading those confirmation materials. You're going to find everything you need to know in there. So looking forward to this summer and thanks again for tuning in.